you're in a, a toxic relationship with the Black Hood and you need a breakup. Or I could turn the tables on him and be... Jughead faces off with the Ghoulies and the Black Hood takes his next victim. Let's break down Season 2, Episode 6 of Riverdale right here on What Happened. <laughs> How's it going y'all? Lisa here and welcome back to another episode of my recap show. First I just gotta say thank you to all of you and tell you how awesome you are because my last recap for Riverdale had over 400 comments which is just crazy. That means that you all definitely had some things to say about the last episode plus you shared tons of awesome theories and I love reading through them so please please keep that up. As far as your Black Hood theories, here's the main suspects I gathered from the comments. Obviously, there's Hal Cooper and the secret brother Chick, which a lot of you are still convinced are involved. Some think Hal isn't Betty's real dad and that her real dad is the Black Hood. There's also those that still think it's Tallboy or Sheriff Keller, and even some who think it's Clifford Blossom, who isn't actually dead. There's so many theories and I honestly love them all but I can't even wrap my head around any of them yet because I'm still kind of confused. I still have this kind of inkling that maybe it's more than one person but I really don't know. I feel like they're just throwing us all off to reveal something random in the end. We'll talk about that a little bit more later after we dive into the recap of chapter 19, Death Proof. So in this episode, Cheryl decides what to do about her sexual assault from the last episode and ultimately ends up helping Betty out. Jughead challenges the ghoulies to a grease-like street race and while Betty thinks she's finally got the black hood outsmarted, he ups her once again. So let's dive in. First of all, for all you bughead shippers out there who were super mad that Tony and Jughead kissed at the end of the last episode, Rest easy, because it was just a one-time thing, and by the end of the episode, Bughead is back together. Yeah, sure, we start the episode with Tony waking up in Jughead's trailer, but all they did was some PG-13 groping, because honestly, both were in some pretty vulnerable spots. But you know what? She knows he's not over Betty, and as she puts it... I'm not interested in being anybody's rebound. Besides... I'm more into girls anyways. Yeah, sorry Juggy, hate to, you know, put a blow to your self-esteem there, but for all of you who chose to go ahead and just hate on Tony for the sole reason she kissed Jughead and had chemistry with him, hopefully you now will reevaluate because I think Tony's actually a really cool character that I'm excited to learn more about. And plus, she's just a really good friend for Jughead and he needs another one of those on the south side. As far as the theme of this episode, I feel like it's a pretty common one that's in various movies, TV shows, especially related to teens. Jughead points out that everyone wears a mask and when those slip off, it's when you see one's true self. Now first up, let's talk about that douchebag Nick St. Clair who gets what's coming to him, but not how you think. Betty's freaking out that the Black Hood has maybe whacked him off, so she runs to his hotel where his door is cracked and she thinks she's gonna find him dead. Sorry Betty, but that jerk is still alive and rambling about how Veronica is lucky he's not pressing charges. As Betty tries to warn Nick that he's not safe there, Sheriff Keller walks in to take Nick to the station because they've had a complaint about him. Over at the lodges, Mrs. Blossom has miraculously somehow healed really nicely from those burns she had, which I'm pretty sure were on her face, like her whole body. Yeah, she must have gotten the best plastic surgeon in Riverdale, if they actually even have one. Hiram and Hermione tell Mrs. Blossom that they called her as soon as Cheryl told them what happened, but Mrs. Blossom, being the worst parent per usual, says it was all probably Cheryl's fault and she probably provoked Nick and she just, you know, wants all this handled discreetly and they aren't going to press charges. Hiram says he's confident that the St. Clairs feel the same way as Cheryl and Veronica listen in from another room. And when Veronica tells Cheryl she's sorry, we see Cheryl retreat back behind her mask, per se, to agree with what her mom said. And, you know, she's just like, oh, you know, mom's right, nothing happened. You know, it's just a momentary lapse in sanity. Veronica then tries to comfort Cheryl by saying the same thing, you know, almost happened to her with Nick, but she didn't tell her parents, which causes Cheryl to snap saying how Veronica didn't waste, you know, any time telling her parents about her situation, but she doesn't want to be Veronica's puppet in getting vengeance against Nick. Veronica does confide in Kevin about what Nick did to her, but she's too afraid to tell her dad because she knows he'll go all like godfather, eight heads in a duffel bag, whatever, on Nick. Later on, Cheryl, being the classy broad she is, is eating her burger at Pops with a knife and a fork. I ain't mad at it because I'm one of those weirdos that eats pizza with a knife and a fork. 
so you do you, Cheryl. You do you. She sees Nick at the counter ordering food to go for his trip back to New York, and suddenly she is triggered. Nick still denies that he did anything wrong and says Cheryl was begging for it, and that's just enough to light that fire back under Cheryl, and she tells him to get a lawyer because she's going to be pressing charges. But he then bursts her bubble by informing her that she pretty much can't because of the deal her parents made with Mrs. Blossom in the form of hush money. Now, since the rest of Cheryl's storyline kind of fits in with Betty and the Black Hood, I'll save that for that part of the recap. So now let's just move over to Jughead and his drama with the serpents and the ghoulies. Word about Nick St. Clair's wild party has come to the detention of all the parents in Riverdale and they gather the kids and the parents all at the Cooper house. Alice of course thinks every kid but Betty is guilty since you know Betty left the party early which causes some commotion on the couch from Veronica. Archie tells her to kind of let up on Betty since she just broke up with Jughead and I'm pretty sure Kevin said what a whole lot of you were thinking. Bughead is no more and Betty didn't tell <laughs> They learn kind of what we already know is that Reggie brought the jingle jangle to the party and when they demand to know how he got it, he says he got it from a gang member on the south side. They ask us if it's a serpent and he says he doesn't know but Mayor McCoy and everyone kind of already have their mind up that they're pinning it on the serpents. Also, now that the mayor knows Josie participated in taking Jingle Jangle despite her father's own struggles with addiction, Mayor McCoy has now moved cleaning up the south side to number one on her list, even if that means arresting every serpent in sight, and by golly, that's just what she goes and does. While Jughead is showing his article for the paper to Mr. Phillips, who asks how he had time to put out an issue and join the serpents at the same time, Archie comes rushing to the school to pull Jughead out as Mayor McCoy, Sheriff Keller, and their police show up handcuffing south side students left and right, including Sweet Pea and Tony. Archie informs Jughead that the mayor thinks it's serpents dealing Jingle Jangle, but Jughead says it's not them, it's the ghoulies. Archie tries to tell Jughead to tell the mayor that, but Jughead is still pissed at Archie and Betty for everything in the last episode. He then gets a text from Tallboy and they meet him at the house of a guy named, I think, Malachi, who speaks on behalf of the ghoulies. Looks like Tallboy is one to not be trusted as he tells Jughead that they basically need to unite with the ghoulies and times are changing and the only way they can really unite is to get Jughead's blessing since he's FP's kid. Jughead can't believe his dad's right hand man would do this, but seeing as how Tallboy is pretty much in charge now, he says that you know Jughead needs to get in line because times are changing and if he doesn't, he'll suffer the consequences. Jughead's now at a loss for what to do, so he and Archie go to visit FP to fill him in and get some advice. FP is obviously not happy that Jughead has joined the Serpents, but he tells him what to do. He says avoid bloodshed because this is probably a territory battle, and so what you have to do is challenge the ghouls to a street race over territory. Archie and Jughead then march back to Malachi's to challenge them to a race. Now if Jughead wins, the ghoulies will stop dealing at Southside High and the serpents will remain their own thing. If he loses though, the serpents will fold. Well, that's not enough for Malachi, who also wants some territory, who ends up basically demanding the white worm and the trailer park. So you know the stakes are higher if Jughead loses because he'll end up losing his home as well. Buckhead ends up reuniting as the two work on fixing up Reggie's car for the race. And I love that Betty is the badass who fixes cars. Jughead continues to give her the cold shoulder and says how breaking up with him via Archie was actually worse than doing it by text, yeah. Betty explains she had to do it because everything was imploding around her, but she can't exactly tell him why, but she was trying to protect him. But you know what, Jughead says she ended up doing the one thing that actually hurt him. She explains that she'll tell him everything when she she can, but right now she just needs to get him through this race alive. Not the kind of drag race I ever imagined myself going to, but at least the guys are hot. Before starting the race, we get another cute bughead moment as Betty tells Jughead that she never stopped loving him and she's not sure she ever can. And everyone just say it together now. Oh. Also remember, don't ride the clutch and don't want to slip between gear shifts, okay? You're an enigma, Cooper. Cheryl then carries out the moment she was born for by kicking off the race as Jughead and Archie race with Malachi and his goons towards the bridge. As they come up on the bridge, Archie starts to freak out because he knows the road is gonna get narrow and they'll end up crashing. So against Jughead's wishes, he pulls the parking brake, causing them to stop. And Jughead is pissed, but it turns out to be part of Archie's plan. They hear sirens and see that Malachi has been stopped by Sheriff Keller and a barricade of his men. Now Tallboy and everyone are scattering and are pissed thinking that Jughead ran to the cops, but Archie fesses up that this was his plan all along. Jughead informs Archie that once the ghoulies get out of jail, they'll be coming for Archie's head on a stake and probably all of their heads. The next day at school, Tony tells Jughead the serpents are pretty divided over his actions and they then see the cops show up at school, but thankfully it's not to arrest another serpent. Instead, it ties into Betty and Black Hood's storyline, so now 
now let's hop over there. When Betty is walking home after checking on Nick, she gets a call from the Black Hood who is so happy that she told him Nick's name, you know, at the end of the last episode because while Nick isn't one of Riverdale's sons and he won't hurt him, that moment allowed the Black Hood to see the real Betty who he says is beautiful, righteous, also a judge, jury, and executioner. He says that now that he's seen her true self, the real work can begin. Betty then meets with Archie and catches him up on everything and says she's done with the Black Hood. They then get interrupted with calls from their parents to go meet at Alice's where they're reprimanded for the whole party thing and end up with community service which consists of picking up trash at the park. At school, Veronica and Kevin are still giving Benedict Betty the cold shoulder and Betty gets another call from the Black Hood. She tries to tell him that she's done with him but the Black Hood tells her they're not done yet and if she doesn't help him, Riverdale streets will run red and it'll all be Betty's fault. So what does he want Betty to do? He wants her to help him find out the name of the maker of Jingle Jangle who is also known as the Sugar Man and he wants her to start by asking Cheryl who's the daughter of the Sugar Man's former supplier. Now if she does this for him he'll put down his sword but if she refuses someone else will bite the dust. Now Betty goes to visit fabulous Cheryl and asks her some questions she says that are for an article about Jingle Jangle. When she asks Cheryl if she's ever heard of the Sugar Man, Cheryl says it's just a story her mom made up to tell her and Jason his children to scare them if they were being bad. You know the whole typical boogeyman sugar man type thing. He'll sneak into their room at night and take them away. When Betty asks if it's possible the sugar man worked with Clifford, Cheryl just says she told her the truth and it's something that was made up by her mom. Cheryl then goes through a box of her old keepsakes and drawings and pictures and finds a drawing she did as a kid of her, Jason the Sugar Man, and she takes it to her mom. Meanwhile, Betty goes to find Sheriff Keller at Pops to ask him about the Sugar Man. He says that now that Clifford's dead, anyone honestly could be the supplier. Veronica is at Pops and overhears, and the two of them end up making up over milkshakes, which is obviously one of the best ways to make up, right? And now Betty explains to Veronica know what was going on and how she wants to turn the tables on the black hood and you know what veronica says she's in they end up getting the name of reggie's supplier and you know hatch their own plan of trying to follow him and track that down to hopefully find the sugar man but instead they end up at the ghoulies headquarters where archie and jughead also are making that deal about the race back to cheryl she goes to show her mom the drawing of the sugar man and asks about him and how you know, she and Jason always had to stay in their rooms when he came over. Her mom just plays dumb and says she has no idea what Cheryl's talking about. After Cheryl learns about the hush money from Nick, she once again goes back and confronts her mom. And guess what? She's found that check from Nick's parents and she uses it to get real answers from her mom. Now, I actually love this scene and I think Madeleine Petch does so well in it. We see Cheryl tell her mom that she's upset because her mom continues to defend Clifford who murdered her own son, but she won't even stand up for her daughter against a would-be rapist. Cheryl then says she's not giving back the money until Mrs. Blossom tells her the truth about the sugar man. Eventually, Mrs. Blossom does come around and tells Cheryl that over the years there were a lot of sugar men and when Clifford was trying to groom Jason to take over the business, he wanted Jason to meet the current sugar man against her wishes. That ended up being the beginning of the chain of events that led to Jason's death. Cheryl's now satisfied enough that she gives her mom back the check and asks for the sugar man's name. It's also kind of surprising here that we see kind of a real human side of Mrs. Blossom for once as she crumbles up the check and throws it into the fire. Now Cheryl, learning that the lodges are still taking money from the St. Clairs from her mom, decides to share that info with Veronica who goes and immediately confronts her parents who actually spend most of the time in this episode playing chess. It seems like they don't see anything wrong with, you know, taking the money since Cheryl's accusations have already been dealt with, nothing's, you know, no charges are being pressed. But then Veronica informs them how Nick tried to do the same thing to her, causing her parents to change their attitude. They end up doing just as Veronica predicted, and we learn that the St. Clairs were in a car accident and Nick will be okay, but his recovery will take several months. Oh well. Karma's a bitch. Yeah, pretty sure someone had something to do with that and that was not a real accident. Cheryl also gives Betty a call to tell her the name of the sugar man. When Betty gets a call from the Black Hood, she informs him that she's not going to give him the name because she's already informed the sheriff of it and published something about it in the blue and gold. She wants the sugar man to be brought to justice, not executed. The Black Hood tells Betty that she's playing a pretty risky game, but Betty is pretty confident since she found out who killed Jason and who the sugar man was that she can find out who the Black Hood is. Then we get a little intimidation of Dirk. Dark Betty. I'm breathing down your neck. Can you feel it? Can you feel me? Yeah, well, that seems 
pretty intimidating, it's actually not for the Black Hood. We find out that the Sugar Man is Mr. Phillips, yeah, that teacher from Southside who was, you know, mentoring Jughead on the school paper, which explains why he didn't want Jughead sniffing around the gangs and Jingle Jangle. Now, as Mr. Phillips is sitting in his jail cell, it looks like every cop in that place stepped out for a donut or something because the Black Hood just strolls right in and shoots him dead in his cell. Yeah, sorry, Betty, looks like you can't beat the Black Hood on this one. He's always one step ahead. Now, this episode also showed that Fred may be dealing with some issues coming up in, you know, the future episodes as he's seen popping his pain pills and Archie looks pretty concerned. Also, Betty does end up coming clean to Jughead and it looks like Bughead is back on by the end of the episode. As far as an episode goes, I think it was a good one, but it wasn't as good as the past few weeks have been. It slowed back down a little, but I am curious to see what the Black Hood's next move is now that he got to the Sugar Man and... You know, it's what he wanted, but Betty still defied him, so is he going to make her pay? As far as performances go, I am so happy that we got a lot more of Cheryl in this episode, and we got to see both sides of her. Madeline does so well at bringing both of those to life. You know, we got to see her with her mask, trying to save face siding with her mom, but also that vulnerable human side. Obviously, though, this is my favorite Cheryl moment from the episode. Uh, I usually do the honors. Not today, Cha-Cha. I was born for this moment. What else? Reggie and Josie continue their flirting in this episode. Tony officially told Jughead she's bisexual, so we'll see how that plays going forward. Seems like Betty may be in some real hot water with the Black Hood. Also, she may have her friends all in danger as she's pretty much told everybody now about her dealings with the Black Hood. Also, Jughead and Archie, they totally can't be off the hook with the serpents and the ghoulies, right? I also love that Betty pretty much reclaimed her ponytail and showed off her badass mechanic skills. But yeah, she's still putting people in danger, so we'll see how that goes. Also, I just want to know more about what Hiram and Hermione are actually up to. I know it's not really the main mystery, but it has to be come to the forefront at some point. And they're teasing us just a sliver enough that sometimes I forget about it, and then sometimes it's like right back in my face. So I just really want to know what they're doing, and I'm also glad we got to see FP again, but I kind of want more of him. Now let's take a look at the promo for the next episode. I have a theory about Sheriff Keller. You lied to me. I am just getting started with you. Chuck Clayton asked me out on a date. I'm just living minute to minute here. This is one of those secrets we keep. We've all done bad things ever since the Black Hood walked into this diner. All right, so that shady serpent lawyer lady comes back and Betty says she has a theory about Sheriff Keller. So is that to throw those of you that think Sheriff Keller could be the Black Hood off, or is he really involved? Does he have some kind of other secret? All I know is that in the trailer, it looks like Veronica's going down to the basement in her nightie and walking in on Sheriff Keller working out shirtless, which is kind of weird, right? Gotta say though, Sheriff Keller's looking pretty buff. Chuck is also back and it looks like he may uh, hurt Josie, which is a total no, no. Yeah, so next episode looks like things are going to pick up steam again, and I can't wait but i'm actually going to have to wait because there's no new episode next week because of thanksgiving and the show returns on the 29th so if you turn on tv next wednesday and you're like what's going on why is this a rerun don't fret you're not missing anything now do you have any new theories about the black hood he's taking out the jingle jangle maker so what's his next move i'm also still curious how he couldn't really figure out who the sugar man was on his own because it seems like he has some pretty good sleuthing skills and if Black Hood is Sheriff Keller, what is his motive? Or maybe are there multiple people working together? Are Hiram and Hermione somehow tied in? Hit me up in the comments now with your newest theories and then come back in two weeks so we can talk about the next episode. But of course, until then, you can check out some more of my other recaps or interviews right over here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that little bell to be notified about when my next Riverdale recap goes live. I'm Lisa, thanks so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you again real soon.